All right, now we got some more logarithms, but we're adding these two together. The great thing about this is that we've got two common bases, which means we can apply that product property for this logarithm stuff. So, in other words, I can change this now to be one logarithm with a base of six, and I'm going to take what they were of and multiply them. So it's x times x plus one, and this would equal one. Now, if I change this into exponential form, it should be a little bit easier to solve because we don't know what x is yet, right? So, in other words, I've got 6 to the power of 1 equals, I can distribute this, x squared plus x. And 6 to the power of 1 is just 6, so we don't even need the 1 there. Well, this is starting to look like a quadratic, which is great because in order to make it 1, I can just subtract 6 from both sides. And that gives us x squared plus x minus 6 equals 0. If you wanted to, you could use the quadratic formula, but it looks like on this one it would be easier just to split this up because I can find two factors of negative 6 that will add up to 1 in this case. Specifically, 3 and negative 2, which means I've got x equals 3. I'm sorry, not equals. It would be x plus 3. And then we got an x minus 2, all this equals 0. So to solve each of these, x plus 3 equals 0. If I solved it, I'd get x equals negative 3. And then I've got x minus 2 equals 0. And I would find that x is 2. All right, there's a, there's a problem with one of the answers. And we did discuss this last time. If we were to put this in our calculator, log base 6, of negative 3, we can't have the log of a negative, right? We talked about the properties of logarithms, uh, which is why we can't have the log of a negative, so negative 3 is not going to work out for us, which means that x is 2 is going to be our only answer, which again, we could check in our, in our original equation there.